We are at Happy Valley on Wednesday night for a Boxing Day Bonanza. Eight races, as always, on the city circuit and a competitive card with a planetary theme as well. A very warm welcome to Racing to Win. Merry Christmas as well, in case I forget for later on. Oh. And to you as well, Paul, our former analyst and race caller, Brett Davis as well, Brett. Yeah, yeah Merry Christmas, everybody. And uh, looking forward to uh, an eight-race card. As you've said, Andrew, the planets will align with all the races named after planets of uh, the universe. Looking forward to the card, actually. It'll be a bumper crowd, I would expect. I believe the rain is uh, going to dissipate from what we had on the weekend, and uh, we could even see the sun peeping out during uh, the afternoon on Wednesday, and that'll lead into a very fine night, I would have mm. So some planets and some stars on show as well, Paul, and some really big jackpots. There are some good ones. So uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. So some good jackpots, so Brett can pay for those undies and socks that he got. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know about the socks. <laughs> <laughs> we got the uh, TT jackpot uh, of uh, 13 million, so a decent starting one there, and the six-up win bonus of 4.9 million, so some really good jackpots. You buy a lot of socks with that, Brett. Yes, you could. <laughs> um, probably clear up straight from the start, we're on the C plus three course as well, due to a cracked irrigation pipe. Yeah, there was a, yeah. a problem with uh, the irrigation about 10 days ago, and um, the staff have got to work and rectified that very promptly. Uh, but it has caused a little bit of an issue with the turf nearer the sort of A, A plus mm, 3 right inside. position. So we've uh, gone to the C plus 3, but uh, it'll uh, not affect anything, I wouldn't have thought. Certainly won't. All right, so Happy Valley, eight races on the program. We'll get to that in a second. First up, let's look back on an outstanding weekend to chart in with our racing review. The Griffin Trophy was our feature race, and uh, it's thrown up a couple of good ones in the past, and it may well have another good one here. He went off very short, perfect match, but uh, he got the job done, well, nicely. You know, he's, yeah. he's, hard, he's working at it here. The overall time suggests it was a sit sprint, and I think that probably went against him a little bit, but he was still able to cope with it. He was pressured for the lead early, had to hand up to quadruple double, who then steadied the ship under a good ride from Chad Schofield, but then perfect match in a real sit sprint, was still able to assert his authority, because of the nature of the race, Murray's partners was able to improve enough to, to sneak into third there. So it was a good run from him. I think Witness Hunter had an excuse or two. He was sort of on and off the bridle mm. throughout the race and didn't really settle. But, um, yeah, the winner's a nice horse. Yeah, he would have been a bit nervous taking the 1.3 leading in mm. with 100 to go. It sort of all settled down and he, he did win cosily enough in the end. But uh, be time to tell and see how he gets on and, uh, from that. Yeah, and uh, quadruple double probably deserves a mention as well. Yeah. Still yet to win, still a maiden, but he's run a solid race there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's always had plenty of pace, and they decided to take the option of rolling forward and seeing if they could get a few cheap sectionals, which they did. All right, so that was uh, maybe a star of the future. Here's another one as well, Dark Dream. Uh, this is in race number seven, 2,000 metres, Derby course and distance. This is a marker if ever I saw one. Yeah, definitely. It was a really good uh, win from the source. He, this is only his second start. He did catch the eye on his debut run here. I, I know he brought some tremendous form from Australia. So there was a lot of people uh, on Twitter afterwards that wasn't, wasn't surprised that he didn't win this race. What I found surprising was his price. He drifted out to 4.25 because all the money came for Harmony Victory, who did run on la late for fourth, but no match for the winner. Very exciting win, no mm. doubt about that. We were just looking back through uh, some of the, the stats from last year's race, won by Exultant. Now, he got nine points for the win. We know he went on to be very competitive in the four-year-old series, fourth in the derby for memory, yep. um, and won the Vars this year. Uh, this guy's got 12 points, so the handicapper is suggesting um, at this stage he's a better horse than Exultant. Mm. All right, well, you can see there, 12. Puts him to 104. He's one of two winners on the programme for Sylvester, Sylvester de Sosa. Bring it on being the other one. Um, other big winners, well, Tornado Twists uh, was good. He goes up a class as a result of that. And Styling City, what a win that was. Oh. Unbelievable. Yep. You, you wouldn't like to be on with uh, 150 to go, but, uh, <laughs> gee, look, he, he weaved his way through and mm. uh, just got up, got his nose in front at the right time, Brett, didn't he? Yeah, it didn't do my anxiety any good, <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> uh, but that a was a good call. You, you, you did see him. He's good. now up into the night as well, styling City, still just a three-year-old as well. All right, let's see uh, the weekend uh, action as far as the winners were concerned. Let's see if we can find you some more, though, with our horses to follow. I thought there was uh, quite a few eye-catching runs on the weekend, uh, Paul. What did you find for yeah, us? Yeah, so definitely ones. I, I went for a horse who's got no form. He only run twice in the all-weather before this run. And this run was on the uh, turf for his first time. It's called Mother Wishes. 
This is over 1,400 metres. You can see them uh, in the déjà vu colours, which, uh, if you remember, those ones were very similar if they're not. Say that again, Paul. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you can see them come through the inside there. And for a horse who was at a massive price and showed no form, I thought it was a vast improvement third up. So uh, you can see he hit the line nicely, and he finished just behind the place getters. And the best part of the race was just this last 100 metres. So keep an eye on him when he uh, steps up and trip. All right, we're we'll looking out for him. You're... Um... Well, going back with your long shot here, are you, Brett? I am, yeah. Look, I think if you watch the patrol footage, um, Lucky Hero got involved in a bit of a scrimmage. There was a, um, a suspension out of the race flying Murdy Chad Schofield. There were some interruptions shortly, sort of, or halfway through the race or thereabouts, and it sort of congested things, and he ended up almost six deep turning in, covered a lot of ground. Uh, I thought he ran a very good race, all considered. Um, and I think he's worth following. As I said prior and going into the meeting, he'd been working at uh, Chun Fa trialling while there. He'd had some soundness issues. Um, I think he's quite a talented horse and he'll, he'll go better this prep. Yeah, yeah. it was good run. He, he, he didn't give it away, did he? He hit no. the line. There were actually quite a few horses out of the meeting to follow. Well, yeah. Victory Machine deserves a mention for winning again, but why Cuckoo? He was on debut oh. in second place there. Yeah, yeah. great run. Yeah, and even earlier on, that guy Dragon on debut. Yes. Stormed yeah. home down the middle of the track. Uh, very impressive. 125 to 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, my horse was having his second start, winning Endeavour. He pretty much did this. It's almost a, You could run his first and second starts. It looks almost identical. They've both been in the rain as well. I don't think he's necessarily necessarily just a wet tracker. He's got back, stayed on strongly, ultimately finished fourth here. He's another one out of the Jur Lines stable in Ireland. His name was Glastonbury Song, where he actually ran him in the 2000 Guineas behind Churchill and Thunder Snow. He finished fourth. Um, he's won a couple of races on the all-weather at Dundalk. So um, interesting to see when he gets a um, maybe up in trip again. This was 1,400 metres, um, but I think he's probably want to keep on the right side off. Yeah, yeah. carbon copy of the first run, mm. wasn't it? Very encouraging signs. All yeah. right, that is winning Endeavour. And Berta Rispoli in the saddle. Uh, Brett touched on this. Chad Schofield picked up a couple of days uh, on Flying Mert. He was making his uh, debut. So that's the 6th to the 10th of January. All right, I think that brings us uh, just about uh, up to date as far as uh, the weekend's action is concerned. So we roll into Happy Valley. C plus three then for meeting number 32 of the season. We kick things off with a class four. It's over the 1650, headed by Impeccable Fellow, a course and distance winner back in October. My Dear makes his debut for Tony Cruz. Enormous honour runner-up last time out behind All You Know Association fans. Third behind Goldland last time out. The Sylph, a last start winner, goes up in class though as a result of that. Carries bottom weight here, Joe Moreira from Barrier One. As far as the horses that have been on the road are concerned, well, my dear, the debutante, the ISG, been up at Chung Fire and back, as has enormous honour. He returned on the 17th of December. Yeah, my dear is the newcomer in the race. He was pushed out of the gates in a trial over 1,700 metres at the valley. So you would wonder, being from the Tony Cruz yard, Barrier Seven, he might press forward. Impeccable fellow's got a low gate. I don't think he'll want to throw that away. He'll be racing pretty handy to the speed. I wonder what the Sylph will do from barrier number one, whether Joe might try and have uh, the good horse a little closer in the run. Here is impeccable fellow. He's uh, <laughs> he had a tough trip last time uh, behind Goldland, so he had excuses. He dropped out on that occasion. Prior to that, his form was pretty good, and he was a winner three starts ago here over the 1650 metres. Uh, association fans, we know he can play up a lot. He's, uh, he's a bit of a monkey at times, but look, he's sort of behaving himself almost here. Yeah? He's having a look at the crowd, singing what he can do, but... Uh, the riding boy had a really good hold on him and uh, wasn't going to let him go. And uh, on the same theme, we've got the self. Look, he won well last time. He's his two start. Uh, he's a two time winner now. This horse, eight seconds. So he's been a reasonable money spinner for his owners. Yeah, has one in this class as well. Joe Moreira, barrier yeah. one. Yeah. Not beyond him. Not at all. All right. So let's start off though with uh, impeccable fella. Now we go back three starts for him when he won. He's had excuses in his two starts. Since. Yeah, well, I, I think we need to go back because following this, he had blood in his track. Yeah, he started favourite, four lengths behind Electric Lightning. And then at his most recent start, he drew gate 11, had a torrid run uh, behind Goldland and wasn't really that competitive. But he did look good on this occasion. So with the good barrier, likely to get a very similar run there on um, Boxing Day night as he did when he won there. Yeah, I'm going to side with him. Uh, he's won off 53. He's up a little bit up to 59. He was 53 uh, when he won that race. But from barrier three, with the hood going on for Ooh. the first time, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously got ability. All right, so gear change there for impeccable fella. Association fans, he's been racing in good form, actually, at the moment. And Starlit Knight's got a good course and distance record. He's won here twice. Yeah, I've been with the bad boy for a while now, Association fans. I'm not going to drop off him. I've got him in the numbers as well. Uh, his, his win was off 43, slightly higher at 49. And look, you can see him flick his tail when he came through here as well. 
But uh, he did. Uh, there we go. Bang. Ooh. See that? He's, yes. um, he, he can do a few things wrong, this horse, but he has got ability and he's another horse who's won twice. General signs of a willing companion, aren't they? <laughs> uh, some horses do it. It's um, yeah. you know, I know he's got his quirks, but um, some they're just just a little thing they do. A little it's fly like, annoying him or something. Slow like down that. Necessarily. Just like your tick, Brett. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of idiosyncrasies, the yes. self. Now, nothing wrong with this win last time out, but no. he goes back up in class. Joe Marrero takes over. Yeah, Jenny will have to deal with both of them in the first race. If only Spring Wind was in the race as well, she'd probably get the trio. But look, I have been um, probably. Um, more bullish about him than many. Um, I did have him in the tips on this occasion, but I didn't have him on top. But that shows you what he's capable of. As you mentioned before, he has one in a higher grade. He's got Barry one, Joe on, lightweight. There's a lot of ticks. It just depends on what type of price you're prepared to, to take, I would have thought, with Joe on from gate one. Yeah, it looks like he might come up under. So I've left him out to do two in a row, but mm. he's, he's got the ability if he wants to. All right, great joy. He's coming off a bit of an all-weather campaign. I haven't seen him since the end of October. Only had the one career start. He's had seven minus four fourths. A lot of those placings have been this course and distance, and his win has been this course and distance as well. Now, he doesn't um, win out of turn, obviously, with just the one win from 24. But I thought this trial suggested that um, David Hall wanted to just get him a little bit focused. You could see they pulled the stick on him there, mm. trying to just get his mind uh, in the right place as they prepare for this race. So. Not without his chance in it if uh, the tempo's solid. That's the key. He gets back. He needs a bit of luck, doesn't he? Mm. All right. But Impeccable Fellow for you here, Paul. Yeah, I want to go with Impeccable Fellow on top. Uh, Starlet Knight, he comes back here uh, to Happy Valley. Last time I was on the all-weather, so forgive that. But he was a winner three starts ago at um, Happy Valley. He's been running pretty good races there. The Blinkers and Tongue Tie will come off him. Sylvester de Souza from Barrier 6 should get a nice run. Association fans we talked about. And Charity Wings are going to put him there as well. He's another one that's won off a... Well, he's won off a rating of 49. He's rated 55, but he should get a nice run from Barrier 4. And Victor Wong will take that little uh, claim off him. 1, 5, 7 and 3. I'll go Exotics in the first. Yeah, look, it's a race where I want a bit of value. I'm hoping I might get some here with Fire and Gold. I've suggested in the past that when he gets to a longer trip, I'll get more interested... Here he is, up to 16.50 for the first time. He's got the outside barrier. He's going to want some pace. You'll want a price. I wouldn't want to be taking five or six to one about him, but I think he's an interesting runner going to the longer trip. If I can get double figures, I'm happy to take a little Christmas chance with him, fire and gold, <laughs> over impeccable fellow, charity wings. And I had to put the silk in just for fourth. All right. You can have him again. I've uh, left him out, maybe to my... At my peril, we'll find out. Mm. Impeccable fellow for me. All right, first race down, race number two is the second section. Class four over the 1650 again.